In the heart of Irving Park, a shiny Mercedes convertible glided through the streets. Inside sat Thaddeus Jimenez and a gang accomplice, their ears filled with the melodies of opera music, but their purpose was far from harmonious. They sought a target for their aggression. Their eyes scanned the surroundings, searching for their next victim. Shortly after, they pulled the Mercedes up to an ex-gang member and shot him twice in the thighs. Just three years earlier, TJ had been awarded $25 million for wrongful conviction. But instead of rebuilding his life with the money, he chose to blow millions trying to revive his gang. He could pay other gang members might remember to remember the story from a few years back. Thaddeus Jimenez was awarded $25 million from a wrongful conviction lawsuit in 2012. He blew all that money when he got out by spiraling into a life of crime. Flip buy guns and fancy cars, give recruitment bonuses, and even give cash prizes to members willing to tattoo their faces with the Simon City Royals insignia. So why did he forsake a chance at a new life? Can wealth truly sever the ties to a past life? Let's unravel the motivations behind his fateful decisions. Who is Thaddeus Jimenez, also known as TJ? Born in 1979 to a working class single mother, TJ always wanted to join a gang when he was young. He learned about gang life from his uncles, who were a part of the Simon City Royals gang and were like fathers to him. The Simon City Royals started back in the 1950s as a group of mostly white greaser gang members. They became well known by fighting with other gangs, especially Hispanic and black gangs on the city's north side. By the time he was 10 years old, TJ was already missing school, smoking weed, and doing all the other illegal stuff. Because of this, he got arrested several times and had to spend time in juvenile detention. Even though they were minor offenses, having a record as a kid still made him look bad on paper. When TJ was 13 years old, his life took a sharp turn. A guy named Eric Morrow, who was 19, got killed during an argument on West Belmont Avenue. TJ and a few members of the Simon City gang were suspected of being involved. They were all young, but were questioned without their parents present, which is illegal. They were let go at first, but one person who saw the shooting said TJ was the shooter. She watched the shooting as she left a lounge from across the street. Two other witnesses were questioned, but neither said TJ was the shooter. However, on the next day, one of them changed his story and said he saw Jimenez shoot Eric. TJ was then arrested by Chicago police officers and charged with Morrow's murder. Surprisingly, the police didn't bother to check his clothes or hands for any gunshot residue, and they were unable to locate the weapon used in the crime. TJ's dad talked to some of the gang members in an effort to get more information, and one of them named Juan Carlos Torres admitted to committing the murder, not knowing that he was secretly being recorded. As TJ's trial went on, the recorded confession by Torres was given to the police. However, Torres denied the conversation at a follow-up interview and the police ceased their investigation into his possible involvement in the murder case. After a hearing before the juvenile court, TJ was transferred to criminal court and was tried for Morrow's murder. During the trial, Judge Christy Burkos didn't allow the taped confession as evidence on hearsay grounds. Even though five different family members and friends testified that he was at their grandmother's house when the murder occurred, the jury still found him guilty. This verdict led to Jimenez being sentenced to 45 years in prison. In the initial years of his imprisonment, TJ stayed in the state youth facility but was transferred to an adult prison when he turned 17. Life behind bars was a constant struggle for him as three things worked against him. First, he was physically small. Second, he was a member of the Simon City Royals gang. And third, he appeared white due to his mixed race background. These factors made him an easy target and led him to have to fight nearly every day. After writing numerous letters pleading for help from lawyers and advocacy groups, he finally caught a break in 2005. Attorneys and students from Northwestern University Blum Center on wrongful convictions decided to revisit his case. What happened is in 2015, TJ had all this money, and initially he was doing the right thing. He was working at a Sonic restaurant, um, trying to make ends meet. Then he gets all this money, and um, I think that all of a sudden he wanted to 
exert all the power that you lost. They relied on the recording of TJ's father, where Torres confessed to killing Moro. Following the re-examination, two key witnesses withdrew their previous statements that TJ had fired the deadly shots, and this prompted the Cook County State's Attorney's Office to reopen an investigation in 2007. And two years later, prosecutors indicted Torres for Moro's murder. TJ was then released and received a certificate of innocence. He also received $190,000 from the state for his wrongful imprisonment. This was followed by a 2012 verdict that awarded him $25 million from a lawsuit against the city and Chicago police. Bad choices after exoneration and rearrests. After his release, a lot had changed about him. Prison had done what it does best, and that was to turn him into a criminal. TJ decided to revive the Simon City Royals, which had faded since its leaders were either killed or locked up. He threw wild, drug-fueled parties and paid to free friends in jail. He gave $50,000 to new gang members and money for face tattoos. He also went online, posting videos on YouTube and Facebook with gang members showing guns and threats against rival gangs and police. During this period, he found himself on the wrong side of the law several times, having run-ins with the police. In fact, in 2012, he faced a conviction for felony narcotics possession, resulting in a one-year prison sentence. This happened after the police searched his home and discovered three guns along with a bag of psilocybin, which is the active part of psychedelic mushrooms. The money he gave out made an impact as more violent crimes linked to Simon City Royals started happening. This includes the January 2015 shooting at a West Side gas station that injured two innocent bystanders and killed several people. Castile shooting and conviction. The day of the Castile shooting saw TJ and his accomplice Roman cruising through the streets of Irving Park. TJ had a sapphire blue gun and bags of extra bullets in the back seat. Roman held a small rifle and filmed their ride with his iPhone. Around 11 a.m., TJ pulled up to Earl Castile, an ex-gang member who resisted TJ's attempts to force him back into the gang he was heading. Castile, recognizing the two men, came over to greet them. However, things took an unexpected turn as TJ made a threatening remark. Why shouldn't I hurt you right now? TJ asked. Castile replied, you're my brother, man. I ain't got nothing against you. TJ, without hesitation, aimed his gun at Castile's legs and fired twice, hitting him in each thigh. Castile fell to the ground and his voice was filled with disbelief. Why'd you do that? TJ simply told him, shut up before speeding away. The aftermath of the shooting led to a police pursuit. TJ lost control of the car, crashing into a parked vehicle before fleeing on foot. They were later apprehended and charged. Roman, the man who was filming the video, received a seven-year sentence, while TJ was sentenced to nine years in prison. Even in the face of arrest, TJ's strong attachment to gang life didn't fade. He penned a six-page letter to his fellow gang members showing his commitment to the cause. In the letter, he asserted that being locked up again wouldn't change his dedication to keeping the royal strong. He also implied that returning to jail felt like coming home. This is where I was created, and this is my home, TJ wrote. <laughs>